Hi guys, it's Joey and Bonge Kitty. So today, <laughs> I'm in a silly mood. I'll warn you now, I'm gonna do my best to be serious throughout this video because I thought it would be a really interesting one to discuss right now. Um, but I'm feeling a bit silly, so Bondage Kitty's gonna be in this video too. So this video is gonna be about the Celtic Commandments. And we're gonna discuss what the Celtic Commandments are and we're going to go through them and we're going to talk about them and discuss them <laughs> put some ideas around discuss how that may or may not affect one's spiritual path and then discuss the idea of commandments in general and commandments across spiritual paths so you have commandments and reads and goals and guidelines and things like that and at the end and we're going to talk about whether or not we feel that this is relevant to modern day and what it means for us in our path working. Okay, so I think I will read through the Celtic commandments completely and in one go to start with and then we will discuss each part as I see it. Again, it's, it's my interpretation of things so take it or leave it. So the entire Celtic commandments go like this. Give thou thine heart to the wild magic, to the Lord and Lady of nature, beyond any consideration of this world. Do not covet large or small, do not despise weakling or poor, semblance of evil allow not near thee, never give nor earn thou shame. The ancient harmonies are given thee, understand them early and prove, be one with the power of the elements, Put behind thee dishonour and lies. Be loyal to the lord of the wild wood. Be true to the lady of the stars. Be true to thine own self besides. True to the magic of nature above all else. Do not thou curse anyone, lest thou threefold cursed should be. And shouldst thou travel ocean and earth, follow the very step of the ancient trackways. From the Carmina, Carmina Gaelica, ancient oral Celtic tradition. Hmm. <laughs> so first and foremost, this has been sort of written down, recorded from Celtic oral tradition. So there is innate problems with that. Let's let's just get that out of the way now. With oral tradition, there is problems with the documentation of things because oral tradition is handed down over many generations by what it says oral tradition and that means it is shaped literally by the voices of the people who speak the words it may change the meanings may shift that's true with written word and how we interpret it but even more so in oral tradition because things can get reliterated renamed um, the meanings can shift you know etc. So anybody who's ever studied history will know all about this, anybody who um, has studied any kind of oral tradition or language or anybody who's just interested in that sort of thing and knowing where things come from will be aware of that. So there is that. So give thou thine heart to the wild magic. So I have, in, in recent months, I've been obsessive about the idea of getting back to what it means for me, obviously not to, to guys, but to, <laughs> to be a wild woman and what that means. If you were a male in the Celtic path, then I guess getting back to your wild male self. Or even balancing the wild male and wild female energies within yourself. I guess that's an even more balanced way of looking at it. So give thou thine heart to the wild magic. I have been looking at the idea of what it means in my heart to be a, a wild woman and not in the horrific modern sense of partying, drinking and whatever. Because that the modern attachment of what a wild woman is has got distorted as far as I'm concerned. It, uh, it's almost become like a detrimental term in, in, in modern sense. I'm going to grab my, one of my stones. Let's have, a, have an earthy stone for, for balance. And 
it's sort of now come to sort of connotate a lack of control rather than being in touch with the wild primal nature of the, the world. And indeed for me, for, for Morrigan, I've discussed her a lot recently as being a primal goddess. And we discussed Danu as being a primal goddess and one or two others that may or not may or not have that primal goddess nature. And by primal goddess nature we're talking about all encompassing back through time, back through the rivers of time is, is what I discussed it. Having a root in prehistory and being the the earth mother from the very early energies that were embraced by very early man and having a sense of everything and wildness and a little bit grr <laughs> in all senses you know um for, for me that 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 wildness of nature comes into it how you feel when you go into a forest which hasn't changed in hundreds of years, which now is a difficult thing to do. Um, you know, you're doing well if you can find one that's 50 years old in some places, and it's a shame as the world gets less and less wild, more and more uh, controlled by everything. I think it becomes more and more important to give thou thine heart to the wild magic to be connected to what was and that wild impulsive soul of nature that beats in all of us if we just allow it in my opinion obviously so to the lord and lady of nature beyond any consideration of this world so the lord and lady of nature allows an openness which means if depending on which gods and goddesses you work within the Celtic pantheon, this being the Celtic commandments. Um, although there's nothing to say that non-Celtic pa pantheons couldn't go through these and, and think about them in terms of their own pathways, but let's stick with Celtic for, for, for clarity and for uh, the sake of it being my path. To the Lord and Lady of Nature beyond any consideration of this world. Okay, so your heart belongs to the God and the Goddess. Beyond any, you know, there's nothing in this world that's going to take from your love for them. It is how I interpret it. You're right there, B BK. There you go. <laughs> um, It's about it's just about love to be honest it's about loving the god and the goddess of uh, lady lord and lady of nature you know of that we talked about that interconnectedness of forests and woodlands and wildlife and that's why a lot of pagan people seek because they feel so at home within nature and see the male and female within nature and that's the beginning of a lot of searching i think I would also argue that love for your god and goddess is different from love for an, anybody else. So, just in case that gets brought up. Uh, do not covet large or small. I think that's fairly obvious, really. Um, and do not despise weakling or poor. Now, that was one I found really interesting because the initial... The initial feeling that you get is of obviously of financial and materialistic goods, you know, do not despise weakling or poor for not having, what, you know, finances and things. Do not um, despise them for being poor, um, not having accumulated wealth, not, ha not having the financial... Uh, levelness of you perhaps and as I thought on it I thought well perhaps that's just too conditional of this modern society in which we live you know that uh, everything seems to be dictated in terms of materialism and material wealth and what we accrue in terms of material possessions and for me that is 
one of the problems of the world really and takes away from spiritual path whilst on the one hand we do accumulate things, magical items, and we like to share them and crystals and discuss the, the, their use and incorporate those things because we are privileged to have those things. Um, on the other sense, the, you know, the idea of looking down on people who don't and can't afford that is, is horrendous. Um, although there is, of course, this idea of coveting, do not covet large or small, so perhaps it also warns against constantly wanting what other people have in any sense. It speaks to integrity and originality and individuality. Uh, of finding your own path of not coveting and, and looking at what other people have or have not. Um, who other people are or are not and what other people create or what other people I don't know all that all that sort of thing you know what what makes a person a person and if you're trying to carbon copy yourself by pretending you are someone else then you're not allowing yourself to be yourself you're carbon copying them and you're being a pale imitation rather than allowing your own individuality to actually reign who you are Semblance of evil allow not near thee, never give nor earn thou shame. So semblance of evil never allow near thee. That's gonna be a difficult one. <laughs> it depends on your very definition of evil. Now, I... I, I often say, you know, people are shades of grey. People are never wholly good and people are never wholly bad. And there are many things I admire in people and there are many things that I do not admire in people. Can I label any of these things evil? Not generally. Um, some acts by people could be considered evil and I can see evil in certain deeds and I've had evil done to me so uh, as a survivor of abuse of um, sexual abuse as a child and a, a survivor of domestic abuse I can say with you know that in certain acts in certain moments evil creeps in and there are things which I think open you up to feelings of very strong negativity, of of anger and resentment. And the thing about those things is, on the you know on the basis of it, things like that aren't evil. You know, they're they're not even negative. Sometimes anger is absolutely the right reaction. Sometimes it's justifiable. The problem comes when you allow these things to poison you rather than moving forward. And I think for me that's been something which I and a couple of people who I know whom I love very dearly have been going through which is the removal of things and people that basically are not contributing to peace of mind who are not contributing to a positive experience, a positive life experience. And I know this is true of one or two of my closest uh, people within my life. And it's true of me. And if I feel that something is just constantly a source of negativity, then it needs to go, which is kind of what this is saying. Allow not nearly. Remove what would allow something to escalate perhaps never give nor earn thou shame shame in modern society as well, well shame being the count the counter side of honor in my opinion um is one of those things that is difficult in modern society to define um i 
I guess this is based on your personal interpretations and your personal feelings about what behaviour counts as shameful. Dishonour and lies is brought up again in a bit, but those are two things which I consider to be completely shameful. And I try my best to live and speak honestly. It's not always feasible in every walk of life, and sometimes it's not safe to do so. And in shades of grey, you see. Um, but if someone was conducting a behaviour which I found totally unacceptable, I would try and talk to them and I have done this and I've been like you know this needs to stop or whatever and if that uh, behaviour does not then we go back to the remove yourself from the scenario. Earning shame. I guess that means that you live by the boundaries that you set yourself. Which we're going to discuss at the end, so I don't go too much into that. The ancient harmonies are given thee. Understand them early and prove. Seeking wisdom. Which is why a lot of us are on the spiritual path in the first place, I should hope. Um, that's why I'm on the spiritual path, is to seek. And I was talking yesterday in the Celtic Calling video about having one foot in the old and one foot in the modern and seeking what's often called the old ways whilst understanding that we cannot live in the old ways because we live in this modern age and therefore we have to combine these things and rediscover what has been lost and so on and so forth and prove it's very open-ended isn't it and prove excuse me bondage kitty you're itching me you're going to have to move now um prove for me is by living as you speak um, which I guess is between you and your gods <laughs> um, because if you're trying to prove yourself to an individual or people then you're basically slamming your head against a brick wall because a good opinion of people is one of those things it's it's you either live for the opinion of other people or you live for something else and I believe in living for something else I believe in being honest even when it has brought me unpopularity um, I don't believe in false falseness and sugary sweet lies and pretending to be someone I'm not. My mother did it my whole life growing up, pretending, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, pretending to be something and caring more about what people thought than the relationships that actually should have mattered. And for me, uh, nothing is more dishonourable than pretending, you know, um, It's why I'm very guarded, perhaps, and why I count about uh, very few friendships as being very, very close, and why I take my time getting to know people. I'm not going to pretend to be your best friend without knowing you. I don't believe in it. And it doesn't earn a person popularity. It just doesn't. And seeking truth and integrity through this sort of path can be the most difficult bloody thing in the world. And we're going to go on uh, and now, you know, be one with the power of the elements, put behind the dishonour and lies. So being one with the power of the elements is seeking the balance of the elements within everything. So um, depending on how you see the elements, because for the druidic elements I believe we're talking 
sky, sea and land and f the generalized five, uh, five points on a pentagram type elements is earth, air, fire, spirit earth, air, fire, water, spirit sorry water water <laughs> Um, so I guess that depends on how you view that again, which is why these things are so open to personal interpretation. But put behind the dishonor and lies, like literally put behind the get, 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 get. <laughs> I don't like lies. I don't like it. I don't, I, uh, the, um, I just don't like it. And dishonor it again is one of these things that we have to define for ourselves. What behaviors do we consider to be completely dishonorable? What an honor and the code of honor and code of ethics changes through time. And again, is usually based on our own personal experiences and what we define as our code of honor. Be loyal to the Lord of the wild wood. Be true to the lady of the stars. Be true to their own self besides true to the magic of nature above all else. So I don't think we need to go too much into the being loyal to your God and true to your lady, because I think that's fairly self-explanatory. Um, be true to thine own self kind of ties into what I've been saying about our own code of conduct, our own feelings of honour, our own feelings of dishonour, things that we really cannot stand and things that we no will poison us, therefore we remove them from our life. Do not thou curse anyone, lest thou threefold cursed should be. Isn't that interesting how that uh, ties into the Wiccan read? And shouldst thou travel ocean and earth, follow the way, very step of the ancient trackways. It would be interesting to visit some of the ancient trackways, it truly would. Cursing is a whole thing unto itself. <laughs> um, but from the Celtic commandments, it's quite, you know, if you do it, you'll get it back. And three is mentioned, and three is important within the Celtic pantheon, as we have discussed many times. Um, basically, what you put out, you get back. You will receive whatever you do. And... Karma, basically which is fairly prevalent within a lot of spiritual paths. Again, that's choice. Freedom of choice. So, we get to the, this point in the video, and I was thinking about the fact that so many different pathways have different guidelines, commandments, the Wiccan read within Wicca, um, the commandments within Christianity. I don't know about other religions in particular, but I know there are goals of the witch and uh, the pyramid within generalized witchcraft. And I was thinking about how there is this common thread of a code, a guideline, suggestions on morality and ethical behaviour and what happens when people interact with these commandments and I tend to see what, sort of three reactions, two are extreme and um, one being somewhere in the middle more balanced and one extreme is to follow everything to the exact letter of a particular interpretation even if it's detrimental the other extreme is to completely reject it and if that I got into paganism to do what I want I sound like Cartman do I do what I want and <laughs> excuse me South Park references <clears throat> and then the more balanced approach of course is to consider why these um, ethical codes exist in the first place to see if they have balance and meaning within our own spiritual path to give credence where credence credence where credence is due credence where credit is due um, and to incorporate what resonates 
and to really consider one's behaviour. And I think the thing about getting into a, the Celtic path in particular, for me, is because I had such a strong ethical code. I had such strong feelings about my goddess and everything about her, you know? And I'm not going to apologise for having strong feelings about my goddess. And ever. And, <laughs> and some of these things, these commandments from the, the Celtic oral tradition resonate really strongly with things I had within me anyway. So when I read it, it was a little bit for me like, ah, that makes sense. You know, that, that fits with what I know about the Celtic path. The ideas of honour and valour. Excuse me. The idea of being a warrior. The idea of disliking dishonour so strongly in a world where um, notions of honour and dishonour seem to have faded into almost nothingness. The idea of wanting to be connected with the wild primal energies of the old ways, of the old places in the earth. The idea of um, not putting out negative magic and not, you know, seeking to harm people because at the end of the day, are we not all people? Are we are not born the same initially? Shades of grey again, of course, because we're not all born the same. Like, you know, you get your psychopaths and whatnot that just have no emotional response and no remorse and things like that. And that, that becomes more of a, a difficult thing to sort of wrap your mind around at what point because we can't just and particularly as warriors we can't just be doormats that's you know it's one right down there and this is a problem that then comes up a lot in witchcraft because you know i'm not going to try this line down um shades of gray so what i'm actually trying to to, to hint at here, get at, is the uh, way in which people interact with codes of ethical behaviours and defining what you think is correct for yourself and then by living by it. We cannot and should not force uh, commandments or guidelines or goals or however we want to say it down anybody's throat. We should not force our guidelines on anyone else. We have to just live by it. And by living by it, we become the example. You know, if I live by this, then I become the example of the change that I want to see in the world. If I live honestly, if I live with integrity, if I live with my individuality, if I live with my creativity, if I live by my code of ethics, then hopefully that will be seen. It's not going to make a difference to everybody and, you know, you can't. You can only really watch yourself because there is a lot of this, you know, looking at what other people say and do. And I understand because some of it irritates me as well, you know. It irritates me when I see interpretations of the Morrigan which I consider to be um, based without uh, evidence, if you like, um, and I really, you know, oh, I meditated and she was made of flowers. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> um, it goes against everything that's speaks truth to me and we are searching for the pursuit of truth we are looking into old myths we are looking into old legends we are looking into um, popular wisdom there is wisdom in the popular conception even if it's not the whole truth there are not hundreds and thousands of images of the Morrigan in the battlefield covered in blood covered in gore in some cases to do with you know death and battle and war because she doesn't have any of these elements in her the, the 
art of it for me is realizing that th these things are very true but they're not the whole story um so when you read sort of one very biased opinion of something that has no basis in any of the myth any of the law goes against everything you've ever um, experienced or um felt or come across or read or anything and and you know it, you, if you want to speak out about that, of course you should. Um, it doesn't mean everyone has to agree with you, and that, of course, is the nature of discussion and debate. <laughs> so, I was considering reading the Out the Warriors Code, the Bushido's Warriors Code. I'm not going to. And the reason I'm not going to is because it actually then jumps from Celtic to. Japanese and samurai and things of this nature and if uh, I've got a really wonderful book here and I may grab a quote out just at random just just for the sake of it <laughs> so this book is the art of the samurai the new illustrated edition of the classic Japanese warrior code I love this book and the reason I bring this up from a Celtic perspective, from a warrior path perspective, bear, bear in mind, it's my path, it's my goddess, she's a warrior at, at heart, and therefore I think there is a lot of knowledge and truth to be gleaned in a lot of the warrior codes, particularly samurai, and samurai get a very bad rap. Samurai means to serve. And there is a lot of really interesting history. I mean, I'm a Japanese not anyway. Um, but things that you can look at and think, can I incorporate that into a modern warrior path? Let's pick one at random. Hmm. Lanterns. Well, I need a, a small lesson. Oh, look, carp. We just did, we just did salmon and carp. <laughs> Is there something short? Because how about this one? Hang on a moment. Okay, fifty one. If a person discards himself for honour, the gods will protect him. The book Renokayo contains the following story in chapter 5, article 12. A certain man of Taku in Heizen province wanted to join a castle attack during the Shimbara rebellion even though he was ill with smallpox. His relatives all tried persistently to dissuade him. If you go into battle with such a serious illness, even if you manage to get there, of what use will you be? However, the fellow insisted on going, saying, If I die on the way, that will be fulfil my long-cherished desire. As beneficiary of the profound favour and kindness of my lord, at a time like this, how can I fail to be of use? So off he went to the battle. Because it was winter, the weather was bitterly cold, but he did not put on extra layers of clothing, wearing only his armour. He made no effort to care for his health, and even less did he try to afford defilement. Kigari. But in spite of that, his illness quickly got better, and he was able splendidly to fulfil his loyalty in the battle. Thus it is not true that in the case of smallpox, one has to be averse to all sorts of uncleanliness. When Shozan heard of the story, he said, Is there anything as clean and pure as discarding one's life for one's lord? If a complete person completely discards himself for honour, all of the gods who defend the Dharma will give him divine protection, not to mention the god of smallpox. Duty above honour. Uh, duty and honour above self-preservation. Sorry, that, that's what we were trying to get at. And the sense of honour being the most important thing. 
And for me, that ties into what we've talked about in these Celtic commandments. And it shows how you can glean knowledge and awareness from all places of a similar vein. And I, that's something that I wanted to finally touch on, was I've noticed the very real um, reaction to people who are perhaps changing their spirituality, who are seeking their spirituality in a detrimental sense. If someone is, is uh, seeking out their truth, their spiritual truth, it's their spiritual truth, it's theirs, it's, it's not yours. Um, and it doesn't mean that it threatens your spiritual path, unless you are not secure in your spiritual path, in which case it may. Um, and the, the commandments is a good example of how there is truth and love and light and enlightenment to be found in all the spiritual walks of life, not just one. The Celtic path is something which I am deeply committed to. I will not change my mind. I, I know it's mine. I know that I belong to the Morrigan. I know I have been marked by the Morrigan. I know that she is present and I will continue to discuss her and my relationship with her as I feel fit, you know, um, and I will continue to discuss archetypes and imagery and anything that I think is interesting or putting my opinion out there because that's my spiritual truth. That doesn't make it somebody else's spiritual truth and if they connect through uh, Christianity or through Hinduism or through Buddhism or any of, you know, however, it shouldn't matter to um, us in the sense that, you know, it's not for us to suddenly become threatened and jump up in arms or something. Why? If they're happy and they're finding contentment and they're finding peace, then all power to them. So the idea behind the commandment video is not only to look into notions of honour and self-government, which I think is really important because without it, without defined ideas we can sort of get lost because of the immense vastness of spirituality and different spiritual paths. There is a huge amount of information out there and if we do not define ourselves and define our path then it can be easy to get lost. This is not to be at the detriment of anybody who is perhaps eclectic as long as they have a defined idea of, of what they are following and where that comes from and this that and the other but it can be very difficult to get sort of a, a grasp particularly at the start but even going forward if we do not define our spiritual path for ourselves that's not to say that we can't read about other spiritual paths it's not to say that we cannot incorporate certain things because to be honest in a lot of spiritual paths there is crossover like the commandments that we just discussed. But the final point that I really want to drive home is it's not the spiritual path, it's the way that you walk it. Many blessings.